Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mass making sessions. We are up to week number 190, would you believe? So for those people who don't watch my channel, we are rerunning um, previous weeks. So we are rerunning week 90. So we are now on week 190. Um, and what are we making this week? So we are making tags with flip down faux envelopes. So if you are wanting to join along, what do you need to bring along with you? So I have brought along a bunch of plain papers. Now, when I say plain papers, I've got here a whole variety. I've got some of my food colored paper in different shades. Um, I have got some of this, which um, you know is referred to as fly sheet from the inside of a book. As you can see, it's bright green. I don't know whether I will get to use this. I'll have to see if it will kind of complement any of the papers that I've brought along. And then what else I thought you could actually use is I've got some vintage document here. So this is some genuine vintage document. And preferably what you'd want is something that's plain on one side and then got pattern, you know, writing, text, pictures, you know, whatever, on the other side. Again, you could use not the fly sheets, but, you know, kind of from the inside of a book, on those first few pages where you've got maybe like the publishing information, things like that. Pages like that where they haven't got too much text and the text and in the information is only on one side of the page. So you could use something like that. So this, for example, is one of those similar pages um, where it's text on one side and then plain on the back. And this is from some sheet music. So I'm going to possibly incorporate that. So those are my plain sheets. That's what I'm going to be using for the envelope flips. Then I've got a bunch of printed papers. Now, again, obviously I'm using printables because that's what I have most of these days. Of course, you don't have to use printables. You could use, you know, um, scrapbooking paper. You could use, you know, book pages. You could use anything that you like. I'm using printables because I mainly have that. And then what you're going to need is <clears throat> something to back your papers onto to make the basis of your tags. So I'm using plain ivory cardstock, this is. And when I say cardstock, I think this is actually 200 GSM. Um, and I've also got some of this buff coloured card as well. This is also, I think, um, I actually can't remember. It could be 230 GSM. Um, but it's thicker than, you know, thicker than ordinary paper. So this is to back it onto. So, you know, by the time that you've glued your paper onto this, cut it out and what have you, your tag's going to be much firmer. Then, of course, you're going to need some glue. Now, I always use the Anita's Tacky Glue, um, you know, for paper type items. I also kind of intersperse with Fabri-Tac when I'm using fabric and things like that. Um, to be fair, though, these are kind of interchangeable. So sometimes it's whichever I grab first. But these are kind of my two go-to glues. Um, I've got my hot glue gun because sometimes I like to use that for decorating and things. I've got an old card here, which I am going to be using for spreading the glue when I'm you know gluing the things the paper down onto the bases I have got some scissors obviously um other things that you may like to use maybe you'd like to use a bone folder maybe you would like to use a scoreboard maybe you would like to use a paper trimmer I don't use any of those things but of course if you find that makes your crafting easier then you know use those um and then other things that you may like to use are things like, you know, your blendy tools. Again, I've got a blendy tool here and then I've just got some walnut stain um, from the Distress Inks. So, of course, you know, you may like to use things like that. Up to you then whether you actually decorate your tags at this point or whether you would leave, leave them blank. I normally just decorate one at the end of the session just to kind of give you some ideas of how it's going to look finished. But then I predominantly leave mine bare um, in their naked form so that when I come to make a journal I can pull them in and decorate them then to complement the journal that I'm making so that's kind of pretty much it really so yeah let's just get going straight away now for these I like to make my fold down envelope flip first and the reason for that is because the width of this is going to kind of dictate the width of the tag itself so, for instance, here I've got this vintage document. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut it down slightly. So I'm just going to cut it down, say, here, just to make it slightly smaller, like that, okay? Obviously not going to throw this away because I could use that for something else. 
and then you know you can see mine is a bit crumpled i mean this is a vintage document so you know it's it's just how it is to be honest i'm not going to bother ironing ironing it or anything like that but what i'm going to do is just cut it down and this is going to be what i'm making my foldy envelope from so to give you a rough idea it's approximately three inches but i haven't measured that and um, i'm not saying they're all going to be three inches i'm just going to you know wing wing it as we go so then what you want to do and we've made these before in a mass making is you want to make your little envelope piece so i start by just folding the top over and i'm making a terrible job of this for some reason right now folding the top over like that and then what you want to do is fold your actual envelope pieces up to meet here. So again, you know, you're going to kind of like, um, not wing this, but you know, you're going to kind of judge this once you've folded your top in. And that's why I fold my top first. If you'd folded your, you know, your folds first, you might find that you've not got enough here to make your neat um, triangular fold and things like that so always kind of start with that and then of course you know if you found that you had way too much paper or something here you could also you know you could always trim it down and things so you know that's just kind of how I think it's best to do it so that's my little faux envelope you can see my paper's not even kind of straight there it's got a jaggedy edge again I mean I quite like things like that and I think it all adds to the character of the tag but you know of course if you don't like that type of thing then you can always tidy it up and not you know not have it looking like that so what I've got here these are some of my Regency papers and I think what I'm going to do is take like this center section to use to make my tag so obviously I'm using my little envelope flip as a bit of a guide and all I'm going to do is cut my paper like that and of course, I'm not going to throw the rest away because, you know, I might use that for a different project. But just getting my paper to an approximate size of my tag. So I have not made a good job of that, but that's fine. I'll tidy it up in a moment. So then obviously, you know, judge how tall you want your tag to be. So perhaps I'd want it like there and, you know, move this up a little bit or something like that. So I'm just going to then glue this down. Now I'm going to glue this onto this buff coloured card because I, you know, I really like the buff coloured card. I think it's very attractive. So I'm just going to take my glue. Oops. And then just glue this down. Now, again, I have not shaped my piece of paper into a tag shape. And by that, what I mean is, you know, I haven't cut those triangles, you know, for the corners. So I will do that in a minute once we've glued it down onto the backing no reason in particular for that just you know i find that again the easiest way to do it but of course you know if you prefer to cut your corners before you glue it down then you know that's absolutely fine too you know do the method that suits you best don't feel that you have to you know follow my method so that's my tag now you're going to cut your tag out like that and of course this is where I'm going to tidy it up and neaten it up down the side hopefully getting this more or less the size of our envelope flip and of course you know I will trim it up if I need to in a second so that's my little faux envelope which I'm going to then glue onto the tag here so like that okay so as you can see that's my little tag shape now at this point, you can see it's slightly wider than my envelope. Again, you know, it's up to you really whether you feel that that needs tidying up or not. I mean, I actually don't mind how that looks, so I might just leave mine. And then what I'm going to do is just cut my corners. Actually, I just need to trim this down here because for some reason my edge has over overhung slightly. So just trim that down there. There we go. And then just take my, whoops, take my scissors and cut my corners. So again the best way to do this and you know this wasn't my idea or anything I saw it on somebody else's video years ago so I couldn't tell you whose it was but you take your corner from here that you've cut and you just turn it straight over place it on your other corner and then cut like that and that's how you get your corners you know the same size so 
then I'm just going to take my little envelope flip and I'm just going to ink it just because I think actually, you know, it could just do with a little bit of ink around there. So like that. Okie dokie. Here, like that. Okay. Again, you know, up to you whether you want to ink like the inside or just the outside or, you know, if you want to ink it at all. But I just think it adds to it you know looking a little bit more vintage and then all you're going to do is of course then glue the whole thing down I'm just going to get that little blob of glue off so you're going to glue it like a pocket so by that you want to glue down each side and straight across the bottom like that okay and then that just pops on to your tag like that okay so then take your tissue or your wipe or whatever it is that you're using to mop your glue out. Or maybe you don't even need to mop your glue out. I always like to keep some dry wipes or some tissues just to hand. I normally have some buried somewhere on my desk that I can always just pull in. And that's it. And then what you've got is a little opening envelope flap there, which obviously, you know, folds down here. And then you've got your tag. And of course, up to you again but you could always pop a cake, uh, paper clip in there and then of course this is your top loading pocket now obviously my glue is not dry so you know I need to be a little bit careful but that will glue straight down like that okay and then just you know ink around the edge of my tag just to pull it in together because I've inked obviously around my envelope so I just want it to you know blend in nicely so ink around the tag like that isn't that just so gorgeous so i'm going to run you through one more and then we will do these in an assembly line kind of style and do like a big mass make of these so let's take another sheet so perhaps i will use yeah perhaps i will use the food coloured paper so sorry just pulling that in so I've got some pink here so this is food coloured paper and all we want to do is cut this down just like before I'm not measuring this or anything I'm just judging my eye so this might turn out this is a little bit wide if it does it's not a problem I can always trim it down so again you know if you recall we said start at the top by folding your little triangles in that's how you're getting your envelope shaped top, okay? At this point, you could glue your triangles down. I didn't on the last one, but I will do here just to, you know, give you the difference. Um, up to you, really. Sometimes I do glue them and sometimes I don't. I don't think it's an essential thing, but, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that if you, if you want to do that. So completely, you know, up to you how you do it or you know like me you may want to do some where you've glued it down and some where you don't and then you're going to just take your envelope piece and you're going to fold it up so like that and like that and then we fold our flap down there now at this point if you need to trim it up at all this is a good time to do that so I just trim in there and then just squish it down so again just going to use my scissor handles I mean, I don't know whether this really needs inking, but I would just ink around it anyway. So, like that. I mean, I just quite like the inked, the inked look, but, you know, obviously it's not an essential thing. So, like, like that. Okay. And then, let's take some paper to use. So, I've got this one here. Oh, my goodness. How pretty does that look with this? Okay, and this one is from my Cambridge Garden papers. So again, place that onto your paper, just as a sort of rough guide of the width that you want to cut your paper down. And you know, like before, you can always re-trim this afterwards. So, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly, or, you know, spot on. You can always trim it up and, you know, help it out in a minute. But trim that down there and then trim in where you want it to be. So 
Do I prefer it higher up or would I prefer it lower? I'm not sure. Maybe up here. Okay, so I'm just going to take that bottom piece there like that. Okie dokie. Again, won't obviously throw that away because we can use that later. And then you're just going to take your paper, glue it down onto your background sheet. Oops, sorry. I have unclogged my glue this morning because I didn't want to have any mucking about with the glue. But you know what it's like. You start filming and still your glue then misbehaves. So like that, plenty of glue all around. Okay, right. Take your paper, pop it down onto your background. And you know, I have used this because I quite like sturdy tags. You know, some people maybe don't mind having flimsier tags, in which case you could use the fly sheet from book pages. You could use, you know, just other pieces of paper. I prefer them slightly more sturdy than that. So hence I've used a slightly thicker grade paper. Um, but completely, you know, your choice how you like to finish your tags off. There we go. Now I have not made a very good job of cutting that so just trim it down slightly more obviously this is going to then sit here at the bottom as that pocket so just like before we run the glue straight down the edge there straight ooh, straight across the bottom like that okay and then pop that down onto there so and again I've got another another wipe floating around on my desk I just pull that one in and we just press that down everywhere and glue that down and then of course we just take our corners one flip that over and your other corner then there like that okay and then, of course, you know, it's up to you how you finish your tags off. You might want to have little tabs there. You might want to have some ribbon, you know, completely and utterly up to you. But they're really, really cute tags, aren't they? So I might actually trim mine down slightly in terms of height because I think it's a little bit on the tall side. So, yeah, just make that slightly shorter. And then I'm just going to ink around the edges. Like that. Okay. like that how gorgeous is that so what we're going to do now we're going to do some assembly line styling of these and what I mean by that is we're going to do all the stages in one go so I think what's the best thing to do is start by folding a bunch of the little envelope flips up then um you know back some cards to make my tags and then stick the um you know the envelopes down onto them so I'm just going to bring in my planer papers and this is where I will then you know realize that I've not actually bought a good range of you know complementary papers to the background papers but anyway it doesn't matter and we're just you know we're just going to kind of like suck it and see really so I'll just start by cutting down a bunch and then we'll do all the folding and all of that you know and then we can just relax have a nice time have a catch up hear what everyone's been up to and um yeah just have a lovely time doing some mass making so i need to start the video by just saying another thank you to everybody for all your amazing support um following my my video about my current situation um i know that obviously i have posted a couple of videos now you know i posted one responding saying thank you um, and I also have now done my um, beginning of my ring bound journal. Um, so, yeah, I have obviously, you know, posted since that first video. But just in case you haven't seen it, I just want to extend my thanks again. Um, I have been so overwhelmed. I'm literally speechless um, over to, you know, how kind everybody has been in their response and their support. So, yeah, thank you so, so, so much. And honestly, I mean, I'm 
I can't even put into words how much you guys have touched my heart, my life, everything. And um, yeah, I just feel completely overwhelmed, literally lost for words. And honestly, I'm very rarely, very rarely lost for words. Um, it's been a kind of emotional roller coaster, and you know, of course, I don't want to drag this session down or anything like that. So I'm not going to go into it too much. But please know, you know, I am kind of going through comments and things slowly, and um, you know, I yeah, I don't want you to think that your support or you know any um, you know kind and generous people's um, you know purchases or you know, buy me a coffees and all of those kinds of things. I don't want you to think that they haven't been noticed or I, you know, have have not noticed or I've ignored you. I honestly haven't, um, you know, ignored it. I honestly haven't not, you know, not noticed or anything. I just, I'm, I'm blown away, literally completely blown away. And, you know, I know that I have also said that I'm trying my best not to go on YouTube too much, not to get distracted because of course you know the purpose is really I need to you know focus and do the things I need to do to try and sort my you know my life out for me and the children's sake um but that being said you know I I don't want to just you know overlook everybody's amazing generosity and kindness so thank you so 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 much so I'm not going to dwell on that too much more if that's okay because like I say this doesn't feel like it's the time and the place. So this is my first mask making that I've done for a little while. I have to say I felt so nervous this morning and it's so crazy. I mean I felt quite nervous the other day when I filmed the video um, that I just mentioned you know where we've begun making our ring bound journal. Um, using my freebie papers so if you haven't seen that please do go over and then download yourself a set of the freebie papers um yeah I I felt quite nervous making that video but for some reason this video felt even more nerve-wracking I think because to me this feels to me like a live video it's not live obviously but I film this always on a Monday ready to go up on the Tuesday and of course you know it's the most live video that I do um, because it's the most current, if you see what I mean. A lot of my videos are filmed in advance. You know, they maybe don't go up, you know, for weeks, maybe even months. So, you know, this is the only video where I'm actually kind of saying what I might have done during the week and things like that. And it really, really, really feels like I'm hanging out with friends. You know, I really do feel like, well, like we're all just having a lovely time crafting along together. Um, and this is the one where, of course, I have the most com comments and chatty, um, you know, responses and things like that. And I really, really feel like I know you all, um, you know, through mainly the mass making videos. And um, I just, I felt really, really nervous. I don't want to let people down. I don't want it to be a disappointment. Um, yeah, it's just really weird. Anyway, so yes, I've been feeling nervous about doing this video and, um, you know, I hope that we hope we all have a nice time. Hope it's not disappointing for everybody or any, anybody. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's, that's that. So it's very strange, honestly. I mean, I think kind of only probably if you film videos and, you know, loads of obviously people who've commented you know they are fellow video makers video creators and um yeah I mean it's just the most strange feeling because you know no matter how many films that you do how many you know how many times you film it, you just have a little curveball you know something slightly different in your routine and it just throws you straight back to being like a complete beginner again and that's a little bit how I feel today is, you know, trying to kind of film as per my normal, you know, that I'm filming all the time. But obviously I've been hardly filming for the last two weeks. And um, yeah, it's just surprising how very quickly your nerves do set in and doubts and all of that kind of stuff. So it's very, very weird. So if you are a fellow, you know, content creator, you know, share below. What's your experience of this? Do you still get nervous when you film videos? Do you only get nervous maybe like, you know, if you've been on holiday, say, for a couple of weeks and so you've not filmed, um, you know, for a period of time? You know, what's your take on it? Or maybe you don't feel nervous. Maybe you, you know, just are in the zone and in the swing of it and don't feel nervous. I don't know. 
it's very 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 strange and um yeah but you know again we just have the most awesome community and i mean if there was any doubt about that before hopefully you can all see what absolutely amazing 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 lovely people that we have in our community because honestly the way that you know i felt supported and and loved over the last couple of weeks is just unbelievable and yeah i just feel so blessed and so humbled you know to be part of such a special and loving community i mean i think we're you know probably slightly different from other communities on youtube i mean obviously there's like a huge say gaming gaming community um i obviously i don't know anything about the gaming community you know i mean i assume it's probably younger people i assume it's probably more males than females i don't know they may be sweeping statements but you know I don't know whether they're pulling together in a crisis or supporting one another would be to the volume that we've experienced or that I've experienced here in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, I just feel we must be <laughs> like the most caring and amazing community here on YouTube. But, you know, I don't know. Like I say, I don't really know anything about other, other you know, um, sectors or niches as they would call them here on YouTube. Um, because of course I don't watch those types of videos but yeah definitely definitely my goodness we are so very lucky and blessed to be or I I am so lucky and blessed to be part of this um, junk journal community so yeah it's amazing so what have I been up to well aside from obviously the you know the legal rubbish that I've been still trying to do um, you know what else have I been up to so um, my lovely sister Natalie she's obviously still um, helping me out with my shop um, so her and I we were very very busy for two days last week restocking and putting things into my shop on my website because we'd had a lot of requests from people where things had sold out so in particular the printed paper pads if you've been waiting for those to go back into my shop on my website there are more printed paper pads in there now, along with the die cut packs, because those were two things that I've had, you know, lots of requests for. So if you, you know, if you have been waiting or, you know, hoping that we were putting more of those things in, then yes, they are in there now. So, um, you know, please do, please do go across and have a look. Right. This is my William Morris papers. So I'm just going to, I think, marry this up with this. It looks quite pretty, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, we were very, very busy for two days last week, um, doing that. So that was really nice and it was really nice to be doing some, you know, some crafty things and not just all my legal stuff. Um, what else have we been doing? So obviously in the throes now of trying to prepare my house for renting it out, um, <laughs> So for anyone who doesn't watch my channel, um, I rented my house out last year and I'm renting it out again this year. We have an event that happens quite locally to my house. Um, and, you know, the accommodation locally just literally gets sold out, um, completely sold out. And I mean, for like 25 miles, it gets completely sold out. So, you know, people are then trying to rent people's houses, rent rooms in people's houses and all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, we are renting our house out. We did it last year. We're doing it again this year. Last year, um, it was the first time I'd ever done it. It was <laughs> very, very, very hard work. And I vowed that if I was going to do it again, I was going to try and streamline my life and not have such a messy house in the first place. Well, of course, like all these things, you know, great plans, um, or what's that expression you know about best best laid plans and all that of course of course those best laid plans they all went out the window and of course my house has oh just got even more messy than it was before so yeah it's going to be no less of a nightmare than it was last year to be honest to clear it out so yeah we've started kind of doing that and um started getting tidied i've got quite a few things i need to kind of purchase you know for the people coming to stay just, you know, things like, um, oh, I don't know, 
uh, <laughs> replacing say like my oven tins and things like that because you know uh, trays you know the oven trays because my oven trays you know they're maybe not in the best shape um and you know although for me they would be fine if you are renting your house out to you know strangers obviously you can't just give them you know your kind of trays with burned on food <laughs> so you know yeah I've got to kind of buy things like that I've got to buy I don't know some curtain hooks and things for you know some of my well not some of my curtains but my bedroom curtains where one or two of the hooks are broken and things so just yeah lots of little bitty kind of jobs to do um you know those kinds of things so yeah going to be very busy we've already started doing some of that but yeah need to kind of get on with that this week so that's what we've kind of been you know sort of doing a little bit already and obviously got more to do this is my purple rain um papers by the way uh yeah so we're going to be doing that um what else these are my pink parry papers so yeah i thought these would look very pretty with that blue um and I have to say, you know, I muck this up because this is a very, very, very skinny envelope, isn't it? So it's going to have to be a very small tag. But, you know, that's fine. It's it's fine. So, yeah. Um, so that's what we've been predominantly doing. Aside from that, yep. Yeah, I mean, literally haven't done anything else aside from that, to be honest. Um, but in the evenings, whilst I've been obviously kind of doing things, um, you know, making stuff for my shop and finishing things off that like Natalie and I have been doing and things, um, I have started watching a mini series on Netflix called Hannibal. Um, now <laughs> this is only probably relevant if you are a Silence of the Lambs fan. Um, Silence of the Lambs, I mean, I was like a teenager when that came out, um, I couldn't even tell you, I don't remember when that came out, but I don't know, maybe night, I don't know, maybe 1988, something like that. Um, so I can remember it coming out and it was such a brilliant, well, I say brilliant, you know, it was like a sort of groundbreaking type film because it was so gory, it was so, I don't know, it just seemed to break the mould and was like, I don't know whether it like led the way for other not horror movies um but psychological thriller type movies i suppose is the category that it would fall into i'm not sure um but it was kind of very much like a you know first of its kind sort of film wasn't it now i'm going to try and cut this down here i think and then i will trim my envelope up so yeah anyway um i really like that film gotta love um anthony hopkins i mean he is absolutely brilliant in that film i just oh he's so good um so yeah i really like that film and netflix have now got like a spin-off from that where it's basically um the story of hannibal lecter before he's been arrested so before he's been caught and he was a profiler um helping the fbi and if you know the story at all um the you know the detective in there um or you know the guy in the fbi jack crawford his name is he works with hannibal lecter which you know obviously i hadn't really picked that up from the film um silence of the lambs and of course there is a another film called hannibal um so yeah i hadn't realized any of that stuff um i had bought the books Hannibal and also Silence of the Lambs years and years ago tried to read them couldn't kind of like you know read them if I'm truthful because sometimes I think if you've watched the film first it's actually helpful you know Hunger Games for instance I'd watched the film first and then read the books and actually I found that very helpful because I couldn't have pictured what the arena actually looked like in Hunger Games without actually seeing the film um you know that gave me kind of a basis of what to picture a lot of the scenes in the book as um silence of the lambs i think because hannibal lecter was so um you know powerful in his performance i i just couldn't kind of um i didn't feel like the books really captured him as powerfully as you know perhaps i felt that they 
you know, that I'd hoped they would. Um, so anyway, I, I haven't read the books. Um, but yeah, so I assume that there is actually a series of books that are, you know, that this series is kind of based on. Again, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen them. I don't know whether there are or not. Sorry, that texty page just then, that was from the Junk Journal Basics Kit 2. And this is from the Botanical um, Collection background pages. So anyway, this spin-off, it's called Hannibal. Um, so I've been binge watching that. So, you know, whilst I've been kind of doing things and making things, that's been playing on the TV. And, um, oh my goodness, there's three seasons. And I don't know whether all the seasons have the same number of episodes, but certainly season one, I think, had seven or eight episodes. And they're reasonably lengthy. They're about 45 minutes, I think, per episode. So I have watched eight episodes so far, would you believe? So, yeah. I mean, I guess that's like two episodes a night, you know, for four nights, um, you know, last week. So, yeah, I've flown through them. They're really good. The first couple, I struggled a little bit because exactly for the reasons that I struggled with the books was I struggled with the different Hannibal Lecter and I just thought, oh, you know, you're not Anthony Hopkins, you're not really kind of working for me. Actually, once I've now, you know, got used to him, he's actually brilliant. So, yeah, he's, yeah, I would kind of say just as good as Anthony Hopkins, different, obviously. So, you know, just kind of bear that in mind he obviously he is different but then having said that you know this would have been Anthony Hopkins before he was arrested so you know he was a younger man um but you know just as kind of um not mesmerizing but watchable just as kind of in engaging that would be the word he's just as engaging as Anthony Hopkins so yeah I'm really really enjoying that so if you are a fan of Silence of the Lambs, I would really recommend that. It's very, very, very good. So, yeah, that's what I've been watching. Um, our weather here seems to have deteriorated a little bit. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on with the weather. That being said, probably just as well because I was actually finding it very, very, very hot. Um, and to be honest, you know, when you've got a lot of stuff to do indoors, who wants it to be lovely weather outside? Because, you know... You just want to be outside then, don't you? So, you know, it's actually quite good that the weather's not so good, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, that's me up to date. My son had his friend, he came to stay for the weekend and he also <laughs> pitched in helping us clean up and things. So that was so kind of him. So, yeah, really, really, really kind of him. I mean honestly the poor lad I bet he thought wow I'm not going to bother going to stay there again I just rope you in and get you helping out with the cleaning <laughs> I know I've talked about this before but my middle son he actually really enjoys cleaning and he especially enjoys organizing so kind of you know blitz in an area which of course that's what needs to go on in my house is areas be blitzed so yeah, he really likes that. And I think his friend also really does quite like that. So, yeah, that's what what they were doing. But, oh, my goodness. I mean, they've worked wonders already in just, like, a couple of areas. So, it's amazing. So, I mean, obviously, I'm not expecting him to watch my video. Um, but if, if ever he did stumble across this, I want to say a massive thank you. So, yeah. Um, and thank you to my son as well, who's just amazing and very, very helpful. Um, so yeah, that's kind of that. I kind of was just working really quite a bit at the weekend. Um, you know, still kind of making things really to, you know, put in my shop and, um, yeah, just did a little bit of pre-cleaning ready. I mean, obviously, it's very tricky because you're still living in the house, you know, and you're still fully using everything every day. So, you know, you can't kind of clean things too early because then you're going to just make them dirty again. So what I've done is I've started doing what I would call like a pre-clean. So say like the bathroom and things. Every couple of days, I'm giving it a bit of a clean so that hopefully when I do the final clean, it's going to be less, less dirty is the plan. So, yeah, that's kind of how I'm, I'm hoping that's going to pan out, but we shall see. 
we shall see. Um, yeah, it's one of those tricky things, but we're trying to kind of like wind the freezer down and the cupboard and things. So there's not like a ton of food in there because I mean, nobody wants to come and stay and find someone else's food everywhere. So yeah, we're kind of like, you know, having really weird meals at the moment, um, <laughs> you know, just to use things up out of the freezer and the cupboards. So my daughter had a friend round um, last week after school. She had a friend round for tea and, um, oh, I, <laughs> I gave them, you know, because I was trying to empty like packets from the freezer. So, you know, when you get packets with like half, half the packets gone and you've just got a handful of things left. So their meal consisted of fish fingers, hash browns and some oven chips. I mean, what a rubbish meal. And yeah, I, <laughs> I served it up and I called them down and I could see her friend when she sat down, kind of like written all over her face was like, oh my goodness, what kind of meal is this? She was probably gutted that she'd come round for tea, to be honest, but... Yeah, I said, oh, would you like some ketchup? You know, everything's better with ketchup. So, yeah, they, they put ketchup on and then they ate the whole lot. So, yeah. <laughs> and then they did have an ice lolly for pudding. Um, but yeah, they probably... Well, I mean, my daughter, obviously not, because she's been having these weird meals for a couple of weeks now. Um, but her friend, I'm sure, must have thought, what on earth? Look at this rubbish that your mum's feeding us. But, yeah... So that's the kind of food we're having at the moment. Not not lovely food or anything. Well, I mean, hey, let's be truthful. My food's very rarely lovely. Um, you know, I used to spend lots of time cooking and things, but if I'm truthful, that's gone right out the window. You know, it's just uh, different priorities. And to be honest, the kids aren't very grateful, are they? They're, you know, they're not really very grateful when you spend ages cooking things. They, you know, turn their nose up and, you know, one of them likes this and one of them likes that. So it all just ends up feeling quite pointless why you made the effort in the first place, really. So, um, yeah. But, I mean, I did used to, you know, cook things fresh from scratch and all of that stuff. But, yeah, it's, it's gone right out, right out the window now, if I'm truthful. So... Yeah, anyway, lots more winding down of the freezer. The good news is that means we don't really have to um, do much food shopping at the moment. So that's all good. You know, it's just a case of doing... Oh, sorry, that's bow coming in and out of the room. Um, yeah, we don't have to do much food shopping, which is great. Just a bit of like topping it up, you know, things like bread and milk. Bread and milk and, I don't know, a bit of salad or something. I mean, again, you know, that meal that I made last week, the diabolical fish fingers and hash browns and chips, you know, could have put some salad with that. But let's be honest, the children wouldn't have ate it. They um, would have just left it. So, yeah, they had no salad or anything on their plates. It was just that weird, dry <laughs> freezer food. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, and then let's do this one. Yeah, so I hope that everybody else is having a lovely time anyway. And, um, you know, I hope that you're all managing to do some crafting and having a nice time. I know that lots of you, you know, you're keen gardeners and things like that. And so sometimes it's a bit of a um, sort of tug of war, isn't it? Between, oh, do you go in the garden or do you do crafting at this time of year? And, you know, that that is a bit of a bit of a thing, isn't it? You know, if you want to be doing outdoorsy things when the weather's nice. And of course, you know, wanting to make the most of the nice weather. I mean, I'm not a not a gardener by any stretch of the imagination but you know I do like being outside yeah definitely do like being outside but not gardening you know but just being outside generally oops I nearly pulled that one in um yeah just being being outside generally is is lovely isn't it I'm going to just glue this down because as you can see where I trimmed this up 
it's now got this weird shape on there. So I'm just going to glue that down and then that disguises that shape. And then these are probably the last two that I'm going to actually make up. Um, and I'll have to do the rest off camera because otherwise we won't have time to actually decorate one up. So I've stopped the film a couple of times and um, I'm not entirely sure now how long I've actually been filming for, but I'm pretty sure I'm sort of up to the wire now really a bit. So we shall just do these two and then we should just decorate one up. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to stay at Natalie's house, um, you know, when the guests come to stay in my house and um, taking Bo with me. And, yeah, the, um, well, my daughter's going to her dad's house. My son's going somewhere else. My other son's going somewhere. So, um, yeah, we're kind of being spread about a bit, but I need to pack my craft bag, obviously, with what I want to take to my sister's. Um, that being said, the majority of my craft things are still in the bag since my holiday. So just because I haven't, you know, had time really to take them out yet. So hopefully it's not going to be a big deal. You know, I'm just going to kind of grab that bag and maybe top it up with one or two more things. Hopefully some finishing off stuff because, uh, yeah, <laughs> just need to finish off things. Honestly. I keep thinking, oh, it's going to be my mission to actually finish off things. But I've got currently about five journals, I think, that are half finished. And I need to really crack on and finish them off. So, And, of course, they're not necessarily the types of things that you could really take in a craft bag. Because, you know, to finish off a journal, I don't know about you guys, but I think, you know, you'd need a lot of stuff with you, wouldn't you? Because you'd need, like, maybe some stuff stamps and I don't know some well all sorts of things lace stamps you know things to stuff your pockets with all sorts of things so yeah they might be a bit ambitious to think that I'm going to be finishing off journals there but we'll see we'll see right so that's that one I mean how pretty does that look it's gorgeous isn't it this um paper here this one that's the pink Paris I mean, it to me just feels very boudoirish. Um, you know, it just has a sort of boudoir type feel. Really do love those. And I was inspired to make those after I did the um, pink and duck egg snippet roll, um, which I know that I think I put that video up a few weeks ago. It just kind of spurred on that whole kit really because I loved the combination of the duck egg and the pink together so much. And I thought, oh, I'm going to do a kit in pink and duck egg. I mean, I'm a very girly, girly girl. If You know, if you haven't come across my channel before, yeah, I'm a very girly girl, really. Um, yeah. And I know pink's not everybody's cup of tea, is it? So, you know, but yeah, I'm very drawn to pinks and things myself. Right. OK, so I'm not going to um, do any more because I'm going to run out of time to actually decorate one. So, so far, we have made one, two, three, four, five, six completed ones. I've also got another two here needing completion. So, yep, we've kind of made eight, and we're just going to decorate one here. So, what have I brought along? So, I've brought along some of my shoe toppers, and also some of my vintage vintage style toppers so let's just see what we might think would look good um, oh I don't know now I was going to just go with the shoes but oh, this is a bit of a tough tough choice now um, hmm now I've printed these ones, these are the vintage toppers, I've printed them two to a page. Uh, let's just take these ones down for a moment. I'm thinking if I did the if I did this one. Oh, I might come unstuck here, but 
maybe that's a bit in your face. Let's let's give this a try. Hold on. I'll just take this one. Okay. Oh, nothing still on at the cinema, you know. I mean, oh, just yeah, nothing on. And I don't know. I don't know what is going on. I know I talked about this recently saying, you know, where have all the A-listers gone? Because, you know, they're not on Netflix. So, I mean, have they all retired since COVID? What's going on? You know, there's no decent films really coming out, which is so gutting because, oh, love a film. I think, you know, because... I think as crafters, we're always sat doing things, you know, even when we're watching TV, we're fussy cutting, we're doing this, we're doing that. And the only time really that we don't, you know, I think is kind of like, you know, if I'm at the cinema or something, you know, if I'm physically out and can't be doing it. And um, yeah, it just is such a shame because <laughs> for the longest time now, there's been literally nothing to actually go and see. And it's, oh, such a shame. You know, where have all the films gone? Where have all the films gone? Where have all the actors from the films? Where have all of them gone? It's very, very strange. I also have got the um, toppers in bigger size. So I'm actually thinking perhaps what we should do is have a bigger topper with a smaller topper. So let's just try this for a minute. Okay. Oh, perhaps we'll do this one. I love the sort of contrast with the black in this one. There we go. Oh, my son said that he tried a coconut, a coconut ice latte, I think he called it, um, from Costa the other day. I mean, I'd never even heard of that. I mean, to be honest, I'm so unadventurous with things. I mean, I always, always have a medium skinny hot chocolate. That's all I ever have. Um, you know, I never, ever mix it up. I'm really, really, really boring. But yeah, he tried one of those. He said it was absolutely delicious. So it's an iced latte, which obviously, you know, iced coffee um, with... I don't know whether he meant with coconut flavouring. I was about to say coconut milk, but actually maybe that wouldn't have flavoured it enough. I'm not sure. Coconut flavouring or coconut milk, one or the other. But I'm guessing it, you know, whichever it was, it made it quite coconutty with the coffee. So, yeah, anyway, I mean, it sounded delicious, to be honest. But I'm not quite sure whether, you know, they have the syrups. So you'd have like an iced caramel latte because he often has those. Um, I don't know whether it would have been like an iced coconut latte, maybe with coconut syrup. Maybe that's how they achieve the coconut flavour, I don't know. Um, but yeah, he said it was delicious. It does sound delicious, doesn't it? But yeah, I don't know why I'm so boring. I think because if ever I do think, oh, I'm going to try something different, I, I always end up wishing I hadn't, you know, and I always end up thinking, oh, I should have just had, had what I always have. So therefore, I always do just stick with my original, you know, my original thing. Very, very, very boring. But at least then you know what you're getting, don't you? And you're not going to be tempted to, you know, to want something else. Because there's nothing more annoying than, you know, ordering something different for a change and then thinking, oh gosh, I wish I'd had what I always have. Right, no. I do really like this on the blue. I think it's a nice contrast so let me move these out of the way okay now I'm just having a quick look around to see what else I might have here hmm. that's a bit weird isn't it but hmm. just suddenly spotted these shoes you see and thought oh I wonder if I could have a shoe I mean that is a little bit strange but is it too strange I don't know probably is really isn't it I'm not very good at mixing up you know different different themes you know if I'm using shoes I'm using shoes I'm not great at say mixing up like I don't know shoes and birds for example you know that to me would sound weird in my head 
But, you know, I think that would be a fun thing to do. So, yeah, perhaps we should, um, you know, do something like that. <clears throat> okay. So, my new filming schedule. Um, I think what I'm going to probably do, I'm going to probably try and stick to the same days each week. Um, I did say in my, my video, I'm going to just do three uploads a week. And thank you so much again to everyone who's been so kind and said that, you know, that's really plenty and, you know that you know you hope that that's not too much so yeah that's really fantastic thank you again I you know really appreciate your kindness and thinking of you know of me um yeah I think hopefully three should be fine and doable and you know just take the pressure off enough to be able to you know focus on like I say the things I need to be focusing on and still have time to actually you know put things in my shop and things like that which of course I was struggling to do all of those things so yeah I think it's just going to take the pressure off just enough um so yeah that's going to be the plan and um just got this ribbon here that's going to be the plan but I wasn't quite sure whether I would do a fixed day every week but I think I probably will so of course they're going to include the mass making on a Tuesday that will be a regular fixture you know that will be I'm just going to quickly pop this down with some hot glue um that will be one that I do every week so my Tuesday mass making that will be of course you know one of the videos that I will be putting up and then aside from that they will be a couple of random ones at this moment in time so obviously I might change things around we'll kind of see how things go but at the moment I'm thinking mass making um, and then, so that would be on a Tuesday, just as normal. So mass making, and then possibly on a Friday and a Sunday. And that way my videos would go up on a Tuesday, on a Friday and on a Sunday. So it's then kind of a good space, I think, between them, um, you know, to not be kind of too boring or anything. And yeah, hopefully kind of that would be fun now obviously I have got a lot of videos that I've got you know in the bank as it were that I've filmed previously um so some of them may go up some of them may not during this time where I'm doing a you know a cut down schedule the reason being is because some weirdly enough won't necessarily follow a format of going up spread out if you see what I mean you know, it would become really tedious watching me do, for example, you know, a whole journal just three times a week. And maybe there's, you know, six parts to it. I mean, that that would take two weeks to do a journal, which, you know, that might just seem really, really boring. So I'm going to have to look through and see what videos I've got. Obviously, I will also film some new videos like, um, you know, more individual videos that will go up just odd, odd things. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a very much kind of suck it and see. Obviously, it's been a long time since I did such a cut down video, you know, upload schedule. Um, and you know, as lots of you have kindly said, I mean, three is still quite a lot per week to do and to keep on top of. Um, but you know, compared to every day, that's quite a significant change. A hopefully taking the pressure off, like I said, but also with regards to then filming format and how I'm going to actually upload them is just going to take a little bit of adjusting in my mind, you know, I think. So, yeah, we'll kind of just test it out and see how it goes, really. But hopefully that's going to be the, the sort of rough plan at the moment. So, right, we've got this. Now, just going to have a look. I've got my lovely wide eyelets that the lovely Marianne gifted me so hello to Mary Ann if you are watching and I just want to say a massive thank you to Mary Ann um again thank you so much for your amazing support thank you um you know over the you know in response to my video a couple of weeks ago so I don't want you to think that again I haven't seen um you know your your lovely support so um yeah, just want to say thank you, really. Okay, so, yeah, I've tried to stop hoarding these so much because I do really love these wide eyelets and there's no point in having them and hoarding them, is there? But sometimes things 
are hard to use, aren't they? Because you love them so much. Right, now, what do I want through there? I've got this, which is very thin ribbon. So sometimes I struggle to use ribbon like this because it looks a little bit insignificant. But I'm wondering if we double it, you know, double it up. Oops, just put that through there. And then tie this into a bow. Maybe this will be enough of a, you know, uh, not bulking it out as such, but, you know, kind of like make it look significant enough. I think I'm going to have to just undo this and uh, make this a bit longer. Yeah. Okay. Right. So let me, let me start this again. Take this back out. Right. Double this over. Like that. Okay. Thread this through. Like that. Okay, so yeah, I don't know whether I'm going to manage to do a very nice bow with this, but let's try. Okay, like that. Just, oops, like the best. It's not the best bow I've ever done, I've got to be honest. Oh dear. Yeah, it's not really looking kind of fussy enough is it and I'm not sure really colour wise whether it's the best well it looks okay actually now I've now I've adjusted it slightly it's looking a bit better so yeah let's just pull that down let's just cut this like that okay and then I'm just going to put a little dab of glue oops under here so I like to just do a bit of hot glue just kind of holding it in place really so like that oops sorry just oh burnt my finger there on the hot glue okay yeah it doesn't really need any of the other side because of course you know that's going to hold that all fine now okay so that's my little tag so absolutely gorgeous isn't it and you know like I say this is now a little pocket and then you've also got your little flip down. Oh, switch it now, glued, glued together. There we go, like that. So isn't that just so gorgeous? So yeah, I hope you like them. And um, yep, that's uh, the ones that we have made. Obviously I've got a couple left to finish up. And yeah, thank you so, so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video, which currently this week is going to be on Friday. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys on Friday. Thanks then. Bye.